Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, good morning. Uh, I don't know where people are staying. Uh, I hope that the sound is good and you can hear me well. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Raffaele, for this invitation, not only to take me back uh, to a very beloved uh, organization. Uh, I stayed there for almost nine years, but was indeed uh, the best uh, time of my life from a professional point of view. I, don't have any doubt about that. Um, after uh, stepping down as Minister of uh, Labour and Social Policies in 2014, I was invited by Ban Ki-moon to uh, lead uh, a task force on the preparation of the 2030 Agenda as far as statistics was concerned, is concern, are concerned. And uh, after that, uh, uh, after the adoption of the 2030 Agenda, I launched this idea of establishing uh, this network uh, of uh, civil society organizations, research um, institutes, and so on and so forth. And now ASVIS, the Italian Alliance for Sustainable Development, joins more than 270 organizations, including business associations, trade unions, volunteering organizations, research uh, institutes, uh, foundations. And uh, one of them is this Italian network of universities for sustainable development, which was established by the conference of rectors of universities in Italy three years ago. It could be interesting to know that the original proposal was to establish a network of uh, sustainable universities. But then we decided to change the name because the issue is not only making our universities sustainable in terms of uh, waste uh, management, uh, water management, uh, sustainable mobility, energy consumption, and so on, but to bring sustainability and the 2030 agenda into the research area, into the education area, and also into what we call in Italy the third mission, which means the relationships between universities and the neighbor territories, which means uh, public institutions, companies, and households as well. Today, uh, the network includes almost all Italian universities, 80, and uh, grew up uh, incredibly over the years in order to put the 2030 agenda and the sustainable development at the core of uh, everybody's activities. At the beginning, uh, this was seen uh, as something a little bit strange, a little bit uh, esoteric, if you wish. But then uh, afterwards, we really uh, were able to bring this at the core of universities' work. We will we publish every year a report about what uh, the network is doing and I just saw the new results. Um, several universities, if I will remember, 50% or so, have included the 23rd agenda into their mission statements or into their statutes, which means that uh, beside uh, the presence of uh, the current leaders of sustainability, this is really a transformational change according to the 2030 agenda spirit. From now on, universities have to keep on on sustainability because they change the bylaws, if you will. Second point, uh, several universities now are reporting through sustainability reports. Several universities are following uh, the um, standards of some ranking uh, uh, networks uh, like a green metric, for example, but we are not very satisfied with that because that reporting system is very much uh, uh, focused on, as I said, material stuff, uh, effective management of universities, while they don't really bring uh, a value-added uh, or take a, a value-added the commitment on education and research. This is why, together with the network of uh, experts on uh, social reporting, we are developing our own 
a reporting system that will try also to expand to export at European level. Third point, a lot of courses have been established with a focus on sustainability and a lot of uh, um, specific uh, uh, courses has, have been established within existing uh, curricula. So both specific uh, curricula and uh, some courses in existing curricula have been now devoted to sustainability issues with a mix of, uh, um, with a mix of uh, different uh, organizational uh, solutions, uh, for example, with different uh, credits, three plus three or six, like in my case, in order also to push towards uh, inter-departmental um, cooperation. And therefore, also the possibility of having uh, an inter-cultural um, approach, or as we know, say, transdisciplinary approach. So it's uh, something uh, that is changing the way in which students uh, approach to sustainable development and several universities have decided to give for free the course on uh, the 2030 agenda that we at ASVIS have established or had developed to all their students, a sort of uh, lesson zero that all students must take, no matter what is the course where they are enrolled. In other, wor way, uh, uh, in other words, the idea is that uh, there is no, we should uh, bring to zero the probability that a student coming out of an Italian university doesn't know what 2030 agenda means, what sustainable development is about. Finally, we are now working with the institution that supervises the, uh, um, the effectiveness and efficiency of universities to bring this dimension into the third uh, uh, mission, which means uh, the work that universities are doing, for example, to support companies to uh, push them to, to migrate to, for example, circular economy or uh, sustainable finance, but also institutions, because a lot of public institutions are now developing their own uh, strategies. Last point, which is uh, parallel, if you wish, to what uh, the uh, network of universities uh, uh, is doing, we as ASVIS, in cooperation with the National Administration uh, um, School, which is the school that uh, provides uh, training to uh, top level public managers, we have started uh, since 2018 uh, courses on two particular, on three particular topics. First is the sustainable management of ministries and uh, other public institutions. Second, the coherence of policies for sustainable development. And of course, we use a lot what uh, the uh, OECD has developed in terms of policy coherence for sustainable development. And finally, especially now over the last year, to show how the European Union is embracing the 2030 agenda in order to change its own policies, which means that now for the next seven years, the budget and other policies will be aimed at implementing the 2030 agenda. Therefore, we provide special courses on the European dimension of, of this. And very last word, as ASVIS, we also uh, run uh, courses, summer courses or winter courses. Now we were obliged to postpone a little bit because of the pandemia. We have a, a high um, advanced school in Siena, in Tuscany, two weeks of full immersion course on uh, sustainable development. And we see this as an advanced course with also some international speakers. 
we launched the um, the tender just a few days ago. And then we have courses for public administrators who work in regions, in uh, municipalities, in order to cover also local authorities. And finally, we have a, an online course for journalists, together with the uh, Association of Journalists. So you know that journalists are obliged to take some credits every year. So if they do this uh, course, they get a lot of credits. So this is very popular at this stage. So this is just to give you an overall idea of what we are doing at higher education level. If you want to know more on our asbis.it website, you can find our, our, our annual report also in English where these elements are described. And by the way, the course, uh, the basic uh, e-learning course is also available in English and could be taken and brought to your own uh, e-learning platform to be reused freely. So if you wish, you can contact me afterwards. Thank you very much, Professor Giovannini for this overview. And now to move on to the second question, as we discussed, uh, you have been the chief statistician of the OECD, the president of the Italian uh, National Statistical Agency. You have a great experience on statistics, data, indicators. So how do you think uh, new data sources that can be more granular and sometimes gathered almost in real time, how do you think they can contribute to our understanding of sustainable development? And what is the role of higher education institutions? Well, uh, in the report that I mentioned before, a word that counts, that we prepared for the Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon, in 2014, we highlighted the role of data, not only statistics, but data at large, to promote sustainable development, not just to monitor sustainable development. Some ideas were taken up by UN and other institutions, other, others were a little bit too revolutionary, if you wish, but uh, uh, they still need to be implemented. If we limit ourselves to statistics, a lot depends on the way in which uh, statistical offices have taken seriously or not the uh, measurement of sustainable development. Italy, for example, uh, take it very seriously. There is a publication available also in English by the Italian Statistical Office, which is one of the, I would say, most uh, um, in-depth uh, analysis in terms of statistics uh, around the, the 169 targets and 17 goals, available for the country, for regions, for municipalities. And uh, we at ASVIS uh, bring together these indicators into composite indicators but instead of building just one single composite indicator, like for example, the Sustainable Development Solution Network does, we believe that this is not what we should be doing. We create uh, 17 uh, sustainable development indicators uh, looking at time series. So just uh, with a, at a glance, just looking at two pages of 16, 17, uh, charts, you get an idea of where the country is progressing or where it's worsening. And we calculate these indicators also at regional level and uh, by the end of the year at municipality level. Why is this so important? Because this can stimulate and is stimulating a, a lot of uh, research and also thesis by students on this, but also because the granularity at uh, regional or local level uh, helps universities to explain to their, let's say, close friends in terms of territory, let's say the neighbor territories, how they can use this data, for example, to develop uh, a municipal uh, a urban sustainable development agenda or a regional sustainable development agenda. The Italian government provided funds to regions and the, the largest cities, obliging them to develop uh, 
their own uh, urban and regional sustainable development agendas. And we are working with some of them using these indicators to monitor where they are coming from. But there is still one point that needs a lot of research. These indicators can tell you where you are and where you are coming from. They don't tell you anything about what is the distance to target, which should be very important in terms of uh, guiding policies. To do that, you need two ingredients that are not statistical. The first is that someone has to establish targets, quantitative targets, because not for all 169 targets, you have a clearly identified targets. Therefore, political authorities should do that. But to do that, this is the second point, you need to use models, integrated economic, social, environmental models, in order to simulate the different uh, pathways towards the achievement of SDGs. And this is really a big challenge. I'm working with the Joint Research Center of the European Community on how to bring together the economic, uh, social, environmental models to federate them in order to make this kind of simulations. In 2017 uh, ASVIS report, we ran an experiment using an existing uh, general equilibrium, uh, dynamic general equilibrium model to show how different policies, especially different policies implemented together could reduce some trade-offs that would limit the capacity of Italy to achieve the SDGs. This is an issue of policy coherence, but it is also an issue of research because uh, the worldwide project on the world in 2050 that was launched a few years ago exactly to try to federate models owned by the OECD, World Bank, IMF and so on failed in joining the forces to do that. Th thank you very much. This is uh, very, very inspiring for us. and. Uh, uh, we, we have been working on these issues in the sense that uh, we have done a report on Italy uh, now a couple of years ago in which we were also assessing the activities of universities to support local governments in uh, uh, the sustainable agenda, you know, and comprehending, and understanding and implementing. And Messina, for instance, the University of Messina was very active uh, putting smart uh, um, sensors uh, in, in the city uh, to reduce the footprint, uh, the, the footprint of, uh, of Messina. And we have discussed this, this, the same thing last week with Swedish universities, and they all are doing what Messina was doing. And they, in, in all parts of, of, of Sweden, with the advantage of being very active in Stockholm and using Stockholm as a test bed for technologies that they hope could be of global impact, you know, because they see also the possibility to transform this into a proper market uh, for, for their technologies. So is uh, is interesting how uh, you have always individual champions no everywhere or in italy there are a lot of extraordinary examples uh, in different fields uh, that depend on the individual endeavor uh, behaviors etc but when it gets systematic like in, uh, in in Sweden, you see the difference of the impact and uh, you know the, the capacity of a system to go uh, if it's not a target at least is a in an identified path in which they are all going you know so there's there's a there's a, this collective action that is supporting the transition to a more sustainable social because they are also keen about that and the environmental world but then uh, we, I, I, as I said, I take the opportunity for th that you are also a statesman. So what, what happens on the other side of, uh, of the table? Because uh, we, we have been championing the idea that universities can be the, in the territorial intelligence 
of their communities. And we were very happy to see that this uh, idea was also in the, in the document of the Italian universities. But then these uh, uh, stakeholders need to be able to talk with uh, someone on the other side of the table that uh, only look uh, at monodimensional indicators that as uh, policy agendas, they are very fragmented and siloed. So you that were in the, in the, in the uh, common room, you know, in the Sala dei Bottoni, as <laughs> or, or something, it doesn't exist, but you can that know the machine from inside. What is that you could say to in, improve, improve uh, and uh, help this communication between the two sides? So the implementing part. Well, um, I think that we were successful in uh, helping uh, both the demand and the supply to match. Because the initiative uh, taken to fund uh, regions and cities, obliging them to develop uh, their own uh, regional or urban sustainable development agenda created a demand. And then uh, two years of work with universities provided the supply. For example, there are regions in Tuscany, for example, or uh, Lazio, uh, where Roma is, where um, consortia of universities were asked by the region to pro provide uh, indicators and the, an analysis of the positioning of the region vis-a-vis -vis the 2030 agenda. And that was an important step forward in order also to show what universities could bring beside the statistical analysis. Because a lot of uh, projects now are already looking and will be looking, especially in the context of the new European agenda, to solutions. And universities are developing interesting solution, uh, solutions as well. The second point that helped in uh, bringing together this uh, uh, agenda was that we helped and we are helping uh, several regions to develop uh, a different governance structure to deal with the sustainable development agenda. And several um, regions have established a sort of uh, uh, steering groups attached to the president of the region exactly to break down silos and universities helped also in transforming this approach into practice. The third point is that uh, as ASVIS, we organize the every year, the Italian Festival of Sustainable Development, which lasts 17 days, plus one week before and one week after as a sort of uh, call to action uh, of the entire country because the festival is organized everywhere. And last year, we had uh, 1,000 events, 300 of which were organized by universities, in universities, with universities, by students, not only by the academic uh, uh, groups or uh, let's say, uh, departments and so on. So that was an incredible effort also to mobilize uh, people from the bottom and uh, is being a, a very successful experience that of course helped also regions and uh, cities to show what they were doing. So as you can see, uh, we are trying to push different buttons, just to use your, um, your model. And, uh, but indeed, uh, universities are really moving forward very quickly, also because now the European funds uh, for research will be more and more oriented to the 2030 agenda. So they see also that in terms of uh, financing, those universities who invest in this direction will have better opportunities to get European funds. I was in 2015 invited by the European Commission to develop a framework with a research team on how to evaluate 
projects uh, at European level according to the 2030 agenda, and now they have implemented that. And so this is also an important, uh, I would say, hook for universities to grow in this direction. One of the big questions, of course, and I would be happy mm, to discuss with all of you afterwards, is eventually how to bring uh, these experiences and learn from other countries' experiences at an international level. We met, for example, with a network of German universities, 